Hey YouTube, Ian from Big Rock Media. It's Tire Changing Day. So today I'm gonna to give you a tire changing guide for beginners, shade tree mechanic, whatever you wanna call it. So, so many of us are intimidated by how do we change the tires on a motorcycle? We just end up taking the bike into the shop. Well, today I'm gonna to walk you through removing wheels from the bike, taking off the old tires, mounting new ones, and getting them put back on. And hopefully this will be an easy guide. We're not gonna use any special tools or anything crazy. This is gonna be a, you know, the regular guy's guide to changing your tires. So let's get started. Okay, I've got my 790 sitting in the sun. It's kind of a kind of a chilly, kind of cool fall day, but the sun hitting the tires is warming them up, the radiation of the sun. So that's a really important tip for you. Get your tires as warm as you can. Um, you can go for a ride too if you want, but they're gonna cool down, but try to keep them cool. Now let me show you, I've got the new tires over here. So we're trying to get everything pliable and warmed up. So I've got these new Motaz uh, rally tires here sitting in the sun um, in the hottest place that I could find. They're getting nice and flexible, or as flexible as they can for being kind of a fall day. So we'll get those, keep those warm until the absolute last minute. Okay, so the tools that we're gonna use, I do have this little tire changing stand. These are like 80 bucks at most motorcycle stores. I do highly recommend this, mostly because of this bead breaker here that it's got. That's a huge help um, versus trying to break it with a tire irons by hand. And this gives you kind of a nice platform to work on. So you'll see how that works. Um, some gloves, some soapy water in a bottle. Some of these rim protectors that I made out of an old uh, plastic bottle. We've got the wrenches, tire irons, some uh, just, you know, sockets, different things that you're gonna need to get, get going. Also, in order to lift the front and rear of the bike, I'm going to just be, I'm going to cheat and uh, pretend we don't have a motorcycle jack for this video. So we're going to use this car jack. Now I have a heavy duty skid plate, so I'm able to use this to lift up my bike. So we're going to start with the, um, we'll start with the front tire because it's easier and it'll give us kind of some confidence. We'll get that thing, we'll get the front tire up in the air, we'll get the uh, wheel removed, we'll get the tire off and we'll show you how this goes. Okay, so now before we start, before we lift the bike off the ground, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to loosen the axle nuts on the front and back. The reason I'm doing this is because they tend to be pretty tight. And if you put the bike up on the jack, uh, whether it's you're using it, you know, uh, whatever kind of lift you're using, it, it can kind of move the bike off the jack. So we're going to get those broken loose first, and then we're going to lift the, the, the front wheel up. Now, I've got a very heavy duty skid plate, so I'm able to do this, but be careful on your particular motorcycle that you're not jacking up the exhaust or something else you're gonna bend. Okay, see, we just need to lift it enough to get the front wheel spinning loose. Um, so that should be fine. You wanna check and see to make sure it's not gonna slip out from under you. This one is, this one's, uh, it's not that stable to be honest, so we're gonna kinda have to be, be careful with it. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear that, but that's really friggin' annoying. Okay, so what I was saying was, before you get started on this, it's a good idea to look at your owner's manual for removing the front and back wheels. The reason is, sometimes they're gonna want you to take off fenders or brakes or different things, and they're gonna give you the sequence of how all these bolts go. So I'm gonna take a quick look on the manual for the 790. So let's see, uh, and I'm just gonna go through this step by step. It wants me to remove the wheel speed sensor, um, press back the brake linings, you know, remove the axle bolts. Now on this bike, they do want me to go ahead and pull the brake calipers off. So we're gonna go ahead and get this get this work done here. So yeah, on the 790, there's a, there's a speedometer sensor you gotta remove and then they want you to pull off the brake, so. Now I'm in the habit of when I remove screws to try to just put them back where they came from. Uh, once you take the part off, it just helps me keep track of what screw goes where. Now what I'm noticing with these brake calipers is they have Loctite on these bolts. So I'm gonna to remember to put Loctite on these when I put them back in. Okay, our brake caliper slides off. Now, you could bungee this up out of the way or you could just kind of let it hang here. We're just gonna let it hang here like this. I'm gonna work my way around the other side to get the other caliper off. So these are the axle clamp bolts here. Okay, so we got our wheel pulled out. One thing, um, don't drop this on the ground, don't get this dirty, so try to keep that clean, maybe put it on a towel or something. 
Our brake calipers are hanging free. Make sure you don't, if you've got any wheel spacers like this, make sure that uh, you keep track of those and don't get those dirty. So I'm gonna pull that off. Let's see, I've also, see if I have one on this. This is actually my first time taking off the wheel on the 790. Yeah, there's a spacer on this side too. So I'm gonna set that aside, just because if they come loose when you're doing the, the tire change, then you might, um, you might forget to put them back in. Okay, now we'll go over to the machine and get started on the tire. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and break the bead. Now, breaking the bead is kind of a pain on motorcycle tires. Front tire is gonna be much, much easier than the back tire. So uh, this tool has a built-in bead breaker like this. So you get, you can adjust this, the position of this thing. Basically this thing levers down onto the tire here and breaks the bead for you. Now it's a super nice feature. If you don't have that, if you don't have that, you can take tire irons like this and slowly work them in between the, uh, the sidewall and the rim and try to pry it down. So, Now see, actually, I already broke the bead just by hand with tire iron. Didn't even need the bead breaker. Now you're gonna need to flip the tire over and do it on the other side. Don't start levering on the tire until you got the bead on both sides broken. Okay, now we've got the bead broken. Okay, so now that our bead is broken, we're gonna to start to work the tire off the rim. So you can pick a, a, a place to start. I usually start 90 degrees from the valve stem. I don't really know why, but that's what I do. I think it has something to do with the valve stem. Now, this whole thing is a little bit easier without tubes, and the 790 is tubeless, so we'll have to do another video with tube tires. But essentially what you wanna do is, the thing when you're levering a tire is that Let's say I'm gonna to start to lever here on this side. I wanna make sure that the bead of the tire on the opposite side, on both sides of the tire, is pushed down into the center channel of the rim. I'll put a picture of this here, but you have to give the other side of the tire enough room to move. So if this bead is kind of partially attached here, um, you know, on the outside of the rim, it's not gonna give it enough, enough movement here. So I'm gonna simply start. Now, I should use my rim protectors since these are brand new rims. Of course, my buddy Brandon did crash my bike when I let him ride it last week, so 790s broke in, but we'll go ahead, and start to lever these off. Now these are, I'm not too worried about rim scratches to be honest, so we'll uh, forgo that. But you see, you see what happened there? Um, it popped back in. So you kind of have to hold. Sometimes I use the brake disc, but be careful, things can go flying up. So we're just gonna start to work this loose. Now this is pretty easy because this tire is warm and this is a front tire, it's not too stiff. These, these Karoo 3s are not that, not that stiff. Okay, so now that we've got one side off, there's different approaches you can take on this next step. You got one side of the tire off. Now, you could try leaving it here and try to try to lever it off um, from here, but that can be kind of that can be kind of tricky. This is where you scratch your rim, right here. Now, if this approach isn't really working for you. Sometimes what I do is I go ahead and take the tire out of the stand. And then, it's much easier to see what I'm doing now. Okay, that wasn't bad at all. 
So we've got our front tire off. We can go ahead and set this aside. This one's probably gonna go to the garbage dump because nobody likes the Karoo 3s. Okay, so we've got a brand new tire here. Now there's a few things to keep in mind. The most important being that these tire, most tires are directional. So you wanna make sure to look for any directional indications on your rim uh, and make sure that you're going the right direction. Now, a bike with two disc brakes, you know, that both sides of the rim kind of look the same. So you have to really look and make sure, okay, so here I found the arrow on the rim that shows the direction of, of travel. That means when the bike's going forward, that should be pointed forward. So we've got that. So we're gonna match that up. We're gonna find the directional arrow on the sidewall and make sure it's traveling the same direction. So I need to flip this around to make sure. All right, so I've got the direction. I've double checked to make sure that the direction is right um, to make sure that we're not gonna have to redo this. I've done that before, by the way. Now, there's two schools of thought on lubrication for the tire. Um, some people like to use tire lube. I use soapy water. If you lube, if you lube the tire, it's gonna be easier to slip on, but also on the other hand, it's gonna be easier once you've got it most of the way on to sort of come off on its own to work its way loose when you're almost finished levering on the tire. So I'm gonna go ahead and start without the lube and see how things go. I kind of like the tacky feeling of the rubber against the rim because it allows me, it doesn't pop itself off. You'll see what I mean in a second. So basically, keep in mind this, you've got this rod here, be careful. Now, because things are warm, wow, that slipped on by hand. That's because everything's nice and warmed up in the sun. I didn't even have to use lube. Now, okay, the next thing you wanna think about, if you had tubes at this point, this is where you'd go ahead and insert that tube, get the tube lined up and through the valve stem. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about that on this bike. Now, what I, what I did forget about was I need to look for the, the dot on the tire, which indicates, the light spot. So you want to you want to line up the dot on the tire with the valve stem of the bike. So I'm trying to find the orange dot to see if it has one. Okay, so we've double checked our directional arrow. Now I was not able to locate any sort of an orange dot on this tire that would indicate the light spot. So we don't have anything to line up. Again, some tires have that and some tires don't. So now, depending on what kind of tire you have and how cold it is and how stiff your sidewall is, this is gonna be easy or hard. On the front tire, it tends to be a lot easier. I'm gonna go ahead and start one side of the wheel by hand. So for this part, I do wanna have this attached because I'm gonna be wrenching on this a bit. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start here. Now, I'm getting lucky with this tire. I was able to get over half of it on pushing it on by hand. Let me spin this so you can see what's happening here. Okay, so you can see this is the part that we've got to try to get on. Now this is where you might consider using lube or not. I have a feeling I don't need lube today. So now a few things to keep in mind when you get to this point. Remember what I said earlier about the opposite side. So wherever you're gonna lever from, make sure the opposite side of the bead is pushed in the middle of the rim. Now you can use a clamp or something or they'd make different tools to help you do that. But once, if this tire climbs up the outside of the rim, it's not gonna give this enough flexibility over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one of my levers in on this side and start as an anchor point and then I'm gonna start working from the opposite direction. Now, this is where if you had lube on the tire, it's gonna to tend to walk itself back off. But because I didn't use lube, it's much quite a bit easier. Um, take small bites. Do not try to lever on this whole thing at once. Now, I'm kind of nervous by this rod sticking up. I don't wanna impale my chest here. Okay, done. Okay, so I have a celebratory drink here. 
And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this over to the compressor and air this up to seat the bead. Now, a lot of times before I go to seat the bead, I will go ahead and shoot some soap around the edge some soapy water just to help that bead seat without having to use too much pressure. A lot of times you're gonna to have to inflate the tire to a higher pressure than the maximum PSI in the sidewall to get that bead to inflate. But don't, don't worry, that's okay. But don't do anything crazy. Don't put anything over like 70 or 70 PSI in the tire because you don't wanna have an explosion on your hands. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, lube this up, um, put it on a compressor. We're gonna seat the bead and then we'll um, put, the put the wheel back on the bike. Okay, so I was thinking of a few things when the compressor was airing up. So if you were doing this on the side of the trail, um, it would be pretty much the same procedure, except you wouldn't have a tire changing stand. You wouldn't have a car jack. So you'd have to, you know, use a rock or something or a trail jack, which I carry to uh, lift your lift the wheel of your bike up. Um, everything should be warm if you're doing this on, uh, on a ride. It helps with that. But you're going to be working in the dirt, so I have to carry some towels, some rags with me, um, so parts don't get too dirty. Now you might be thinking, okay, because this is a tubeless wheel, um, but it's an adventure bike and you still need to carry tubes and here's why. If you get a cut in your tire that you can't plug with a tire plug kit, then you're going to need to put a tube in your tire. So I still carry tubes uh, for my 790 when I'm not riding, even though it's tubeless. Um, now before you uh, go ahead and air this up, you want to make sure to remember to put the valve core back in. I can't tell you how many times I've you know, aired up a tire, forgot to put the valve core, and then you, the second you take off the, off the uh, air chuck, it just blows all the air out. So we'll go ahead and put that on. I'm gonna go ahead, like I said, and kind of shoot, um, shoot some soap along the bead here, just to make sure that, just to sort of help this thing seat. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and go in with our air. Also, the thing by putting soapy water, you can kind of see as it's seating. Now we're gonna get a gauge and check this pressure to make sure we're not putting too much pressure in it. Okay, we're only at 15, so. Twenty-five. Thirty-six. So now that I'm at 36, which is the max PSI of this tire, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look and make sure. There's a line around the edge of the, the tire and you should be able to see that line outside of the rim to make sure that your bead is seated. On a front tire, it doesn't pop on with a loud pop. Um, in my experience, that's only back tires that do that. But I can see that this little, this little uh, rubber line is showing all the way around. You just wanna look for anything that's not even that looks like the tire's not all the way pushed out. So now that that's done, we're going to go ahead, give this a pressure check. Since the bead is seated, I'm going to go ahead and put it at, um, put it at the pressure I'm going to run on, on my next ride, which is going to be 35. I've heard that these rally tires cup really badly if you run low pressure on the street. So we'll start with that. So we'll go ahead and put this thing back on the motorcycle. Okay, so we're ready to put this back on now. A few things. Those wheel spacers that we took out, remember to put those back in. Because if you don't put those back in, you're going to have a very bad day. Or if you put them in the wrong place, you're going to have a very bad day. Brandon, I'm looking at you if you're watching. Okay, so we've got our spacers back in where they want to go. The next thing is going to be to kind of line this thing up. Um, keep your calipers out of the way and then get the axle pushed through all the way to get that get that secured and then we can start buttoning up our axle and our brakes uh, again make sure to look at your manual to for the correct tightening sequence and the correct tightening torques also as you're doing this make sure that any tools that you needed to do this you carry with you on your motorcycle because if you have to do this out on a trail somewhere after all this is an adventure bike then you want to make sure you have what you need. So if you need a 10, if you know, if you need a 10 millimeter wrench, then make sure you have that, um, so forth. So we'll go ahead and get this on.
Make sure your spacer does not fall out. Sometimes a rubber mallet comes in handy here. Okay, so we got the front axle through. You can see how I just sort of had to shimmy things around. Now we'll go ahead and uh, reverse the assembly process. Okay, so it took a little lunch break and now we're ready to do the back tire. So I've jacked up the bike under the skid plate, which is kind of probably what you'd be doing on the side of the trail if you had to do this with your little jack stand or whatever you had. We're gonna go ahead and get the rear wheel pulled off and get the rear tire changed. Now the rear tire is usually more difficult because the bead is stiffer, sidewall stiffer, and the whole thing is just takes more effort. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, so now on the 790, the manual says you don't have to remove the brake caliper. It says to go ahead and um, remove the uh, chain adjuster lock, tap this out a little bit, and then push the front wheel forward. This allows us to then disengage the chain and KTM gives you this nice little chain holder. Okay, now we've got the chain off resting on the little holder. We can go ahead and pull the, pull the axle out, set that aside. Wipe off the grease from your hand. And we should be able to pull this rear wheel off now, taking care There's always gonna be some level of interference with the brake caliper, so just kind of be careful with that. Okay, let's take this over to the stand. Oh, before I forget, take off the spacers again because Spacers have a way of falling off at the worst possible time. Well, that one doesn't seem to come off, so just seem to have a spacer on that side. So I'm, I went ahead and took off the sprocket that just pulls out of the cush, cush hub. I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside so it doesn't fall out of the way. The other thing that can happen is sometimes the rubbers on the cush hub can fall out. Just keep track of them. Okay, so this tire, this bike's been sitting in the shade since I worked on it, so tire's a little bit cool. We're gonna try to let it sit in the sun a little bit. But just like the front tire, we need to take all the air out. So I noticed that I don't have one of my fancy valve stems or valve core movers on the back. Get a valve core mover and go ahead and flip off. Quite a bit of air in there. Watch my tire pressure video, by the way. Uh, I really like these middle valve caps with the valve core mover really handy. I'll, I'll, so now I can already tell that, you know, this thing is pretty stiff. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing screwed down. So what I'm doing here is getting the bead breaker into position for maximum leverage. Sometimes on, on my tool in particular, this, this bracket wants to slip. That's why I tightened it with a wrench. Go ahead and be careful as you're doing this. Probably the toughest part of this whole job. You can, I have done it by hand a lot with tire spoons. It helps if the tire's warm. Some people use the kickstand on the bike to do it. Some people use a big C-clamp and tighten it down. Um, but it's one that's gonna be one of the challenging, most challenging parts of this whole thing. I'm trying to get this into position here to break this bead. There we go. You see, it's 80 bucks. It's the best 80 bucks I ever spent, I'll tell you that. 
Now remember, we gotta flip it over and do the other side. Ah, heavy. Okay. Ah, okay. Now we've got both sides of the bead broken. So now we're gonna start to lever this thing off. Okay, I've got my tire levers, got everything ready to go. Now remember what I said, it's super important that whatever, wherever you wanna to start to lever this from, that on opposite the rim from that, that you have the beads pushed down on both sides. So make sure Feel with your hand, make sure that tire is staying down the inside of the rim. And if it's not, you may need to kind of use your knee to position it in that way. So, you just want to take real small bites and start to work it off. The Karoo 3, the stock tire is pretty flexible, so it makes this easy, easier. There we go. Okay, now we're home free on this side. Okay, now I usually, like I did with the front tire, I usually take it off the stand for this because I just can't see what I'm doing underneath. And what I'll do is I'll take, I like these ones with the curve in them, and I'll take this, kind of get that curved part up against the tire. Now, don't get your fingers in between the tire and the rim like this. You will lose your finger because when it snaps back like this, it can really get hurt. So just kind of start working this around. Now again, that was pretty easy. That was easier than normal. So we'll go ahead and set that aside. <sighs> okay, and now we'll go get our new tire. Okay, so we've got our nice, we've got our nice fresh knobby tire here. Now I can't emphasize enough the difference it makes to have this sit in the sun for a couple hours to get it get warm and pliable. That really helps everything uh, move along here. So really do that if you have that option. So again, we're gonna make sure that we get this in the right direction because most tires are gonna be directional. So I'm gonna look for that. Okay, it says direction that way. So that would be correct. You gotta look at what side the disc is on, what side the sprocket is on. Actually, no, that's not correct. I gotta flip that over. Double, triple check, make sure that you don't screw that part up because it sucks to have to redo this. Okay, now, this is gonna be the same as the front tire where we try to push this first um, side on by hand. Uh, same thing with the, with the lube. I'm gonna go without lube and see how it goes. Wow. This is really easy for some reason. Okay, normally, now normally I will tell you it doesn't just pop on like that. I don't know what, I just have good luck today or, or the tire's warm enough, I'm not sure. Or maybe these are, uh, I don't know, maybe they're just soft, soft tires, I don't know. Okay, so now we've got to get, we'll start to work on the other side. I can already tell this is going to be pretty easy here. Now you notice I use my knee to help hold things in place here. And I'll start to get this other side levered on.
Okay, now we've got just about 30% oh, of the bead that needs to be flipped or levered onto the rim. Now it's important at this point to stop and pause for a second because, yeah, I don't see an orange dot indicating the light spot. So maybe that's just a thing for street tires. I don't know, but whatever the case may be, this tire doesn't have it. So now getting back to what I was saying, I'm gonna put the, the part I'm gonna lever on away from me so that, so the reason is I need to hold this part down into the center channel of the rim or else you're never gonna get this on. That's the number one mistake people make is that this tire walks up to the outside of the rim on this side and you're trying to lever here, but the tire can't move because it's, it's running up the side of the rim. So what I'm gonna do is kind of just put some gentle pressure with my knees to make sure that that is, uh, that's pushed down. And then I'm gonna to start to lever this on. Now, I can already tell this one's not gonna to be too hard. Now, if you have tubes, you have to be super duper careful not to pinch your tube. And this is where people pinch their tubes when they're at this final spot. Because you put the tire lever in too far, you only want to put this little lip over the rim just enough to get your leverage. If you stick the tire iron in and jam things, you're, that's when you're going to pinch flat your tube. Now things, okay, I'm almost to the end. Now, yeah, see, this is the problem. Okay, so you see what's happening here is that I've got just a little bit left, but the problem is, the problem is I can't seem to get the tire iron under here, it's too tight. Now, I may be able to force it in, but sometimes you're gonna have to back this off a little bit, back a little bit more off, get a tire iron in there, pre-position, and then be able to lever it on, because the thing with tires is you don't wanna force things. If, if you get to a point where you're using a ton of physical force, some, someone's gonna get hurt or you're gonna break something. So you need to stop and reassess. Now remember what I said about the opposite side. You see how I'm working here. So I need to make sure that this part of the tire is down in that center channel of the rim. So you can see the lettering on the tire. I can't see it anymore and that's a good sign. It means that that's pushed inside there. I wanna make sure that kind of all the way around here that that's down in there to make my life as easy as I can. So now, with that done, let's see if I can get sneak a lever in here. That seems to be really tight. So what I'm gonna do is, back this off just a little bit. Okay, now, you can try if you're brave to do all this at once, but that's probably gonna to be too big of a bite. So what I'm gonna do is take that one out. Okay, I've got that. Now obviously I've already got this in place and I'm simply gonna then lever it on. Now there's a tiny bit left there, but I can push it on with my boot. Okay. Okay, so I've got the tire, sprayed some soapy water to lube it up. So when I seat this bead, I'm gonna put my valve core back in, get that tightened down. Now we're gonna go ahead and air this up, watching the bead seat as we go. But what's happening is the air is simply escaping here and not allowing the tire to inflate. What you can do in that situation is kind of try to get the bead a little bit more seated by hand like this by sort of squishing it down into the sides of the rim. See if that helps. The other tricks that I have for this are you may need to take that valve core back out so the air can get in faster to blow that bead on. Or you might have to put more put more pressure in your compressor. Okay, see that worked for me. All I did was sort of 
pushed it against the ground. Now I can, I can watch my bead seat here. Again, there's this little line that you should be, should be able to be visible outside the rim. So I didn't hear the loud popping noise that you sometimes get. Let's see on this side. You know, it depends on your rim and your tire. Not, you're not always gonna get that really loud pop. So let's check the pressure here. Oh, there's like no pressure in it. Now this bead seated super, super easy. Never seen one go on that easy. But that's probably because I put the soap on it. So I've got it aired up to my riding pressure of 36. The max PSI on this tire for its load rating is 35. So it doesn't want you to use more than 35 PSI. It's got a 740 pound load limit at that pressure, so. We'll go ahead with that 35. I may adjust this before I ride, but we'll, we'll start with that. Remember to put your valve back on. Now we'll go put this back on the bike. So all there is to it right now is to put the rear wheel back on. Make sure to check your manual to make sure you're doing things in the right order. Use the proper tightening torques. Make sure your brake caliper gets back on the right way. You don't have any issues with that. Sometimes the brake caliper is a little fiddly to slide the brake disc into the caliper while the caliper is on the bike. If you have a real problem with that, you can actually just probably unbolt the caliper from the caliper bracket and just put it back on later. Um, otherwise, you just try to slide it in. You're also dealing with the chain at the same time and the chain tensioner. So again, a lot of stuff to keep track of. When you put the rear wheel on, uh, make sure to, you're gonna push it all the way forward before you put the chain, the little um, actual brackets on and put the chain on and then you can go ahead and get things lined up and tensioned correctly. Now, before you go ride, make sure to check your pressures again, just to make sure you don't have any leaks. Um, when you do your first ride on new tires, be super, super careful because they're gonna handle differently than your old tires and they're gonna be really slippery when they're new. So if you can, ride in some dirt to kind of scrub them in first. If you're a pavement rider, then there's instructions on how to do that. Also, make sure if your bike has a cush drive, make sure you didn't lose any of the rubber dampers. Make sure those are put in. Make sure your sprocket's pushed in. You've got your wheel spacers on correctly and get that rear end button up. So I hope that today I've proven that you can mount and dismount new tires on your motorcycle in your garage with nothing more than pretty much basic tools, tire levers and things like that. Don't be intimidated by doing this and the more you practice it, the better you're gonna get. And if, and if, like I said before, if you're trying to force something, if something doesn't feel right, stop and reassess the situation. The reason that you wanna do this yourself, the reason that I changed my own tires, even though I could go pay the shop to do it, is that I wanna always be practice at this because I've had to do this a number of times out in the middle of nowhere on the trail and I wanna make sure my skills are up there, that I know how to work on my bike, I know how to take the wheels off, I know how things go back on and I'm good at changing tires so that I can do it uh, in, when I'm in the middle of nowhere. So that's the reason to really practice this at home. I hope this video was useful for you. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Please hit, hit the thumbs up button. It really helps out the channel. Uh, we'll see you on the next video. Happy trails.